Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'll be teaching you how to use more than one methods and the mechanics of it. As you can see here, this whole thing is a method. We want, we want to make another method that is similar and the reason why we want to do that is because that it helps us organize our code into blocks. For example, one of my methods will be math only. And my other math, uh, and my other method will be user input only, etc. Well, let me demonstrate you to type in to make a new vari uh, not variable to make a new method. You can either type in public or private. Private means that it it only can be used in one class. But there's ways to make it into a public eventually. But I'll get that I'll get into that later probably my next tutorial public means that you can use in all classes so it's good to have public sometimes or well, most of the time actually let's, let's make void void means that it's not going to return any value from this method and name your method as any as you want mine's going to be sample You can do the same thing what you can do main. Let's I'll put hi YouTube. Alright, alright, the only problem we have here, Java only reads what is inside of main. In this case, we don't have anything in main. We only have something outside of main, but not in there. Uh, let's solve that problem by using this syntax right here. Just type in your class name, whatever is your class name, you type it here. You make a variable equals new tutorial or whatever your class name is. This right here is similar to scanner. Remember, we have to do scanner and make a variable equals new scanner. All right. Well, basically, right here, T is the class name. Basically, we're setting this as class. And well, actually, let me rephrase that. We're setting an objective for this class right here. So we made T, and we're telling that class, all right, your objective is to output that method into the main method. So this is like, all right, this is the objective that we'll be about to make. And then the class said, all right, basically. And then the objective is to output this. Hope I didn't confuse you people about this. All right, save this. Java C. Uh, Java. Hi, YouTube. That uh, works. All right. Let's say that I want to make a variable in main the main method and I'll put it on a different method. I'll show you what it looks like soon. Byte math equals ten. Yeah, ten. So basically I want this value to be I'll put it from here. I meant from here to there. Java C, C error. Because this right here, this syntax is trying to look for that variable inside this method or outside of the method. Well, let's make it outside of method. Copy. Paste. And then it should work because it's outside of a method. That means right here, whenever you see a variable outside of method, that means that it can be used in every single method. But if you have a variable inside a method, then it can only be used in that method. All right, let's say that I want to use this right here inside the math or the main method. I'll cause an error because 
main is static. See, it says static. So, in order to get that to static, just type in static no errors. Well, yeah. Ten ten. All right. All right. To get rid of this and this too, just type in static. Get rid of this whole line. Get rid of this too. And it should run like that too. No errors. Ten ten. See? If you use static, then it'll save tons by typing static without having typing in the, the operator or objective and then the variable dot this etc yeah I prefer static than that oh now let's do let's return a value let's do and for multiplication the reason why I didn't use byte is because that multiplication is meant for integer value or data type so we can't have a byte um, number but we have our answer has to be an integer int so let's type in byte a equals 5 and then b equals 10 and then int and for the answer sum of those numbers or we're gonna look for we're gonna look for the multiplication I mean yeah so basically we're typing ants equals a times b which will give us 50 10 times 5 equals 50 alright so now let's return this is a syntax you can return and we have to return answer because that's what we're looking for alright so what this syntax did here is that it's basically like saying alright this method this whole method will be equivalent to 50 which is this answer right here so instead of typing ants in main this, we have to keep the method here because this is basically like 50 but we have to make a new variable so the main method can output that and let's do math right here let's do int math and it should output 50 okay errors uh, let me oh my mistake it should be B right here not a okay let's clear screen yeah everyone makes errors so so it's good to scan your program to see any errors after it tells you what line or what part of your program that you need to fix on. Alright, 50 for that and it runs perfectly fine. Alright, let's say that I want to run something inside the parentheses like int a equals int b. Alright. Alright, we're going to find the answer and it should return the answer. And then we type in a number inside the parentheses like we would type in here. Like basically we're setting a value for A and B. And just do the same thing. 10 times 5. Alright, 10 and 5 with comma. 10 comma space or it doesn't have to be space. 5. So it'll be 50. And then it goes through the program. Alright, answer. It then goes to this pro process. It then returns this. And I, it'll be saying, alright, 50. Okay. Oh, yeah. Make sure you have another ant here. Because this is an argument. Okay. No errors. Okay. I'm good. 
fifty. Well, this concludes my tutorial over methods.